whatever you're willing to put into it, it will pay off with huge dividends if you'll just get involved with this organization. Hey, everybody, I'm Carl Wiggers, and welcome to the Louisiana Farm Bureau podcast. This is an episode that we recorded in early February with Marty Wildridge and originally released it back in May. He's the first vice president of Louisiana Farm Bureau and a cattleman from Caddo Parish. In this interview, we're talking about how Marty first got introduced to Farm Bureau, all of his experience in the Young Farmers and Ranchers program in the state and at the national level. We also discuss why Marty continues to commit so much of his time to the organization for the good of his neighbors across Louisiana. I hope you enjoy this episode of the Louisiana Farm Bureau podcast with Marty Wildridge. So Marty, it's February. Uh, it's been cold here in Louisiana. What What's going on on your farm? Let's start there. What's going on up in Oil City? Yeah, Oil City, Caddo Parish. So we're, you know, we're up there in the very extreme northwest corner. We're almost in Arkansas. We're almost in Texas. Uh, it's been pretty cold. We had ice a few weeks ago. Um, it's tough when you drive down to Baton Rouge for one of these meetings because once you get south of Natchitoches for us right now, you're seeing a lot of pretty green grass. Mm-hmm. And we're not quite there yet. Um, but we... Uh, we're feeding cows. We're managing mud, uh, keeping the water on for them when the mm-hmm. nights are freezing. Uh, we're getting ready to start calving. Valentine's Day is kind of our start of our spring calving season. We'll be calving uh, up through April uh, for us, and then we'll get ready to work cows. But, you know, we're counting hay bales. We're managing that to make sure we have enough hay to get through. Um, and then, green grass. <laughs> yeah. And, and now we're starting to get ready with the equipment. It's time to start servicing that hay equipment so we can start a whole nother year uh, maybe in May, maybe in June as it was last year, but we'll be ready to go with equipment and help and getting all those little things uh, taken care of because it'll sneak up on you. Yeah. So you're a cow-calf rancher? You call yeah. yourself a rancher or farmer? I, I guess we're ranchers. I never know. <laughs> I was I, When they ask you your occupation, you're like, um, rancher. I, yeah, sure. Self-employed. <laughs> yes, we have cows. Um yeah, we're a cow-calf operation, predominantly black Brangus cattle. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had Brangus cattle, uh, gosh, since probably the early 80s in our family operation. Mm-hmm. The place where we live and work every day is uh, dates back into the 1960s when my grandfather first acquired the place and mm-hmm. got some black Angus cows and uh, Brimmer bulls and stuff like that. And we're still kind of following that uh scenario. We're always breeding a little ear into our cattle, but mm-hmm. we're cow-calf. We raise replacement heifers, and then our deal is the uh, farm-to-table, uh, farm-to-restaurant supply chain of uh, locally sourced beef products. And you're not just farm-to-table. You're also... I, I say you're not just to restaurants or those. You also sell directly to customers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Retail market straight from the farm. Farmers markets when the weather gets right uh, up in our part of the world. Mm-hmm. Summers are very busy for us working the farmers market circuit, I guess you would say. We do two or three a week. Yeah. A lot of times. But divide and conquer, too. You and yes. Crystal go in different directions. Yes, we do. But, uh, you know, our. Uh, one of our great things is the restaurant business. So that's a steady uh, deal for us every week. Perfect. Well, you mentioned driving south and getting south of Natchitoches. You're in Baton Rouge. We're in the Farm Bureau offices right now. You're here for a state board meeting because you're on the executive committee of the board of directors for Louisiana Farm Bureau. And that's really what I wanted to talk about. Not so much a title, but the organization and why you are involved. So can we, I guess, let's start with how did you get involved in Farm Bureau? So I um, would have to go back and find the newspaper article um, local farmer um, that I had grown up with, grown up around. He was actually a high school teacher of mine. I needed some more hay fields. We needed some more hay acreage. And um, we uh, talking one day and he we, we started cutting hay together, doing something. He said, you know, you really ought to be involved in the Farm Bureau. And he introduced me. He actually introduced me to a insurance agent that came out to the farm. And of course, he wanted to write us. Uh, he wanted to move us to Farm Bureau at the time and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. A uh, guy's name was Lance Rabelais. And he's a really, I mentioned his name because uh, a very important person to me because sitting across a kitchen table one day, he said, no matter what happens today, if I sell you this insurance or not, he said, you need to be a Farm Bureau member. Have you heard about young farmers and ranchers? And I was out of college, probably 23, probably 24 years old. And no, 
I, I didn't know anything about the Young Farmers and Ranchers program. Um, the little fluke thing was he signed me up a membership that day, and I became Cattle Parish's first 3,000th member. So the next thing, I, another farmer, Stephen Logan's calling me up because he's the parish president. Mike Dana's calling me up uh, from the Baton Rouge office. People I kind of, well, I didn't know Mike Dana at all by then, but Anyway, they want to do a newspaper article because Caddo Parish has reached 3,000 you know, members and got me on the board, got me involved in Young Farmers and Ranchers. Young Farmers and Ranchers led to the LSU Agricultural Leadership Program, and it really started snowballing from there. I became a parish president. Uh, I even laughed that the Ag Leadership Program uh, led me to run unsuccessfully for public office, and that's how I met Crystal. Hmm. Did not know that. Yeah. There's some story I didn't know I was going to pull out. But yeah. So just to clarify, Crystal's your wife. You have right. a son, trip. We kind of skipped right past all that. No, that's true. Yeah. But true. Uh, I guess we were up to speed now. So all that happened. That's a lot of involvement, a lot of plugging you in. What was that time span like? Was it overnight? Was it over well, a couple you know, of years? I, like, again, I'd have to go back and look if it was 2000. Let's say it was 2003 that I became a member of Farm Bureau. I met Crystal in 2007. We were married in 2008, you know, start mm -hmm. bringing it up from there. But she'll tell you, if she was sitting here with us today, one of the first things I told her, I said, you know, I'm kind of involved in this Farm Bureau thing. And <laughs> if we're going to be together, I want you to be a part of that. And of course, as anyone knows, if you know Crystal, she jumped uh, mm -hmm. feet first into yeah. it and has been a major part of everything we do. Yeah. Um, so over five years from you getting maybe introduced to Farm Bureau, yeah. And this agent. Did you, yeah, did, you ever get, say, did you ever move your business over for insurance? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, I was thinking uh, if we got married in 2008, 2009, I became wife in our chair and got on the state board the first time. That was OK. So there was a there was a process of being on my parish board, being wife in our chair in my parish. uh getting on the state YFNR committee for my district and then getting on the executive committee of YFNR. So about a six year period. There was time that passed for sure. It wasn't an overnight. Yeah, six thing. year it was about six years of of working at it got us to the state board for the first time. Got you. Well, you've been as long as I've been around Farm Bureau, I've known I've known you because of my family's involvement in Farm Bureau as well. But um YFN R is clearly the inroad for you. What was it about Y F N R that that kind of sucked you in that 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 told you that this is something you wanted to be a part of? You know, um, it's the it's that's it's that overall feeling that we still have in Farm Bureau. But I tell a lot of people I'm just old enough that I wasn't into Facebook. You know, Facebook wasn't really a thing in the early 2000s. Just quite, it was starting to come along, but I was just out of college. We weren't really a part of that. And by going to a wife and R leadership conference in Lafayette, first time I met Mike Dana, the first time I met Rooney Email, I, I just, can just name all these different players from mm -hmm. around the state that we've met. But I became a part of something and I was able to be around people that were like me that we didn't have any connection to. Mm -hmm. Because when you're especially when you're a young person and you're in a in a smaller agri maybe in a smaller agricultural parish or a smaller agricultural area and what have you. In those days, 20-something years ago, there wasn't a lot of people to bounce ideas off of. They're not and a lot. All your neighbors didn't look just like you? No, they didn't. Not, not all my neighbors. And, of course, the guys are a little bit older. They really didn't like the up and – I always say they didn't really like the up-and-coming younger guy that was mm -hmm. trying to lease land and, and grow his operation. And by going and being a part of Farm Bureau and having regular meetings, regular uh, the convention in the summer, man, you were hearing all kinds of different things, things that you ought to try, What you know, and – you know, it's always been great. It's such a good, great group of people. I think that we really uh, can pride ourselves because we'll share our successes, but most every one of us will share our failures too. Mm -hmm. And those are the big lessons that if you'll if you'll help other people by telling them where you failed and being willing to admit you failed, goes a long way. Kind of goes into that failing up and failing forward mm -hmm. kind of a, mm -hmm. a mentality as a group, not just as an individual. But that's, sure. that's a cool aspect. So. Tell me the name of the the guy. Was it an insurance agent you named? Yeah, he's a retired uh, Farm Bureau insurance agent, still in Caddo Parish. He's bounced around a few other parishes as agency manager over the years, whatever. But uh, Lance Rabelais. Lance is the one that got you plugged in. He he was the first person that really plugged me into Farm Bureau. Who was it when you got into vol involved in Farm Bureau? Was there somebody in Y F N R that was like the the state chair or the well? Parish? I was you mentioned well, Stephen Logan. Stephen Logan, yeah, and uh, still a great friend, mentor of mine. Uh, 
uh, just kind of a neighbor through the woods over in the river bottoms there. But anyway, uh, yeah, Stephen Logan propelled me. Uh, he had done a lot of the things that I ended up doing. Like I said, uh, mm -hmm. one of the first things was throwing me into my first or second convention was uh, discussion meet. He said, you know, you're going to compete. We're going to get you lined up in this. And told boy, you're going to compete and then told you what you're going to compete in. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I showed up and I was like, oh, man, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I, I, I won. Yeah. I did it one time. I won it, you know, and went home with the John Deere Gator deal. That, that easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> you just, you know, the right mentality and the right uh, way of asserting yourself in the conversation and a discussion meet, you can win the discussion meet. Yeah. But, uh, well, you didn't stop winning. No. You, you um, had a lot of success in life and R. Yes. Uh, Tell me about some of those. those uh, well, I guess, you know, like I points. said, high point was getting on the state board as wife and R chair and representing all the young farmers around the state for two years, making some of the best friends, friends to this day all around the state. Um, winning the Achievement Award. Uh, 2011, I think uh, I think 2011 was mm -hmm. our year that Crystal and I won the Achievement Award and uh, great prize package. I can't lie about that. Getting to compete at the national level that year just happened to be in Hawaii. We kind of, oh, I think they man. would call it that you kind of hit the trifecta or something. Yes. You know, we, we got all the points that year. Yeah. Um, I remember not even being heartbroken when you don't make the top 10 in Hawaii because, well, we get to spend the rest of the week on the beach. You're in Hawaii. This will work. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and I was trying to think, what else have we done? Through Farm Bureau, you know, it was through the PR department's uh, help uh, after the Achievement Award within a year or so. Um, we were recognized as one of progressive farmers, top young farmers of the year. Mm -hmm. And that was a great deal to go to Chicago and that's be a, a national, part of that. That's, that's a, a national, national stage. Yeah. I know also you mentioned Crystal jumping in feet, feet first. She's been a part of this the entire time. I know she she definitely pulls her weight on the farm as well. I know Tripp's oh, yeah. probably already pulling his weight as well. Yeah, but Tripp's 10 now, and and he really thinks he may be cutting hay this summer. <laughs> That's wild. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I know Crystal's also been involved in women's leadership stuff and, and events, sure. uh, I guess events and trainings and leadership development yeah, that, yeah. that happens there. So tell me about her. She's been, you know, uh, Crystal served on the state women's committee over the past few years. Crystal has emceed the Queen's contest once or twice, I believe. I know one time when she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So that goes back 10 years. Um, Crystal did the uh, women's boot camp. Uh, she really, uh, Crystal has an all farm job. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting. Crystal would have tagged herself or still would tell you that when we first met, she was an introvert. And she swears that through Farm Bureau, through the women's boot camp in Washington, D.C., the skills that she has learned, the experiences she's had through this organization has turned her into an extrovert. Mm -hmm. You know, she is comfortable getting up in front of a group, giving that speech, selling the products, whatever she's got to do, talking about Farm Bureau. She's got it. She can do that outside of Farm Bureau circles, too. Oh, yes, very much so. Probably impacted her just, in, yep. just living in the Shreveport metro area. That's right. But on the that. farm, off the farm, Crystal works very hard at what she does and, and still one of my best hay rakers that you've ever seen. She's meticulous <laughs> about the way she rakes hay. That's nice. I'm sure that's pretty convenient. She it, doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't <laughs> no, she doesn't weave them too <laughs> bad, so it's easy to follow her. It's nice. Well, you're here. We talked about being here for a board meeting, and we are squeezing this in for anyone listening. I'm trying to race through some of these questions because Marty's got uh, a million places to be and a million board meetings to be, we and it starts a, at one. We got a meeting in 15 minutes, but no we're going to be fine. No big deal. But that time is a big deal. And for farmers, it's never enough, it seems. Mm -hmm. uh, at least when you need it, there's never enough time. Uh, right. Calving season time is always terrible to get away or, you know, whatever. There's yeah. always a time commitment involved, being involved in Farm Bureau, especially at the level you have been for the, the time that you have, the years that you have. Why have you continued to, to give that time to an organization like this? Well, um, you know, Farm Bureau is like any other investment you will be making in your life, if it might be a financial investment, a, a physical investment, whatever you want to look at. But you know, when you're when you re can reap the rewards, the profits are huge by being uh, invested in something like Farm Bureau. I can't say enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's the if it's the friendships, it's the life lessons, the life experiences, the generational value of, you know, some of our oldest members that are still around, some of our members that we've Lord and help us in 20 something years, the, the the members we've lost that we don't have with us anymore, that aren't there for convention. Um, and all the way down to seeing that next generation and that next generation. I mean, uh, 
when I started Ag Leadership, I met uh, Adam Falk from Franklin Parish. I think you might know Adam Falk. Big fan. Yeah. And got this uh, got this set of young children. I say young, uh, but George Adam, I think, just had a birthday yesterday. He's 23 maybe mm-hmm. now or something like that. Well, in 2004, when Adam and I uh, started Ag Leadership, Caitlin, who's in college now, was an infant. I mean, she was a few days old or whatnot. And just saying that in 20 something years, I've watched that generation grow up. George Adams married now. He's farming. He's fixed to have a baby. I mean, you realize that when you stick it out and, and be a part of something for so long. Wow. Yeah. It's okay. just it's untold, you know, things. And, uh, you know, I can think a few years ago, Trip was probably three, four. Um, Ag Expo in Monroe. And who had him was George Adam. <laughs> Taking him around, showing him everything. Can't say enough about that. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, and I just elephant in the room. I'm a product of that same mm-hmm. being raised at Farm Bureau Convention. And it's not a better, I don't I don't think there's a better way to grow up no. on the farm and, and in Farm on Bureau. On the farm, in the Farm Bureau, riding the escalator at the Marriott or New Orleans. Yeah. Um, in your years, you said almost 20 something years, I guess, around the, the organization. Yeah. You've uh, you've gotten to know it pretty intimately in regards to, you know, the parish level as a parish president involved in the YFNR, the parish level and the state level and involved now on the state board. What is something that you've seen? And I know you've you've gotten to be in rooms that, you know, you probably would thinking back to your 23 year old self would never imagine yourself being in and meeting people um legislative discussions and dinners and visits to DC and you name it what are some of those things that you've experienced over the that 20 years that when you think about it it's like man we don't talk about that enough we don't we don't sell that hard enough what's is there anything that's like stands out to you that 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 doesn't get the limelight that doesn't get well, all the attention uh, you know i think one of the I was trying to think of what the proper word is here, but going back of over our experiences, talking about those things, but the experience of an organization that is maintaining itself by its youth programs, we have a, um, a I won't call it a revolving door. I'm trying to think of what that a feeder we, program. We've got a feeder program. Good. That's a good one. We've got that next generation coming and we invest in that all the time because who's going to I gave a speech a few years ago in Chicago as part of the progressive farmer deal. And I kind of quoted uh, George Jones and said, who's going to fill their shoes? Mm. Well, one thing that we're always doing at Farm Bureau, if it's um, looking for that next generation, I guess you'd say, but it's the next generation of farmers. It's the next generation of ag mechanics. It's the next generation of industry leaders. It's the next generation of uh, farming policy makers. It's the next generation of insurance agents. All those things that we need to make the agricultural industry work and sustain and be here for the future. And uh, we do it at Farm Bureau. You know, I, and it's the way, even for us, I mean, that's the way we're running our cattle operation at home. We are keeping it together. We're making a go of it. It's got to be profitable, but it's still got to be here. I won't trip, who's, again, 10 years old, but in 10 years or whatever that magic number is going to be. If he wants that option of running cows on that same family place, since he's the fifth generation to actually walk on that piece of dirt, we're doing that. We're taking the steps on our personal lives, but as an organization to sustain. And that's something I think I love young farmers and ranchers for that, that kind of that next generation. Usually you always see coming up through there. Fresh ideas, fresh mm-hmm. things. Let's start a flower farm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, energy. We see energy. You see that, and, and it's really <laughs> yeah. cool to see because for us, from a PR standpoint, we get a lot of really interesting stories or cool stories and get to meet that that young, fired up, energetic Marty Woolridge and yeah. Crystal that like yeah. are going to be here for a minute. Right. And it's really cool. So that's cool to talk about for that person, maybe that's young or maybe not young that is wanting to get involved, getting plugged into Farm Bureau, I guess, what would your elevator pitch to them be? I mean, I know this has been a 20-minute er- elevator pitch, but... Yeah, but take the take the first step. And and hopefully there's somebody in their local area that's had that really positive Farm Bureau experience also, like I've been fortunate enough to have. Um, and hopefully they're sharing their story and they're going to get them out to a 
young farmer and rancher parish get together. Take the first step. If you can get them there, then get them to that first wife and our leadership conference. And then if you can just get them to come to convention, don't you don't have to force them into a competition with wife and R, but get them to start coming to things and seeing how the world can open. It will be opened up. I mean, Farm Bureau opens doors. It opens doors to new financial institutions because you're meeting where you're meeting people is what I mean. You're meeting bankers with different ideas, ag bankers. You're meeting different insurance agents at different times that, you know, hey, you need to check into this. Have you have you requoted this? How's your life insurance? Yeah. But it makes you think. It makes you get out of your rut of what you're doing every day. See a different piece of the state, maybe for a little while. Eat something different. Enjoy yourself while you're meeting people, expanding your horizons and uh, you know, Crystal and I were having this discussion yesterday. She's coming back from a work conference for her job uh, just yesterday. And she said, you know, this is what reminds me how convention has always been for us. And uh, she said, our American Farm Bureau, you know, we'd come back rejuvenated. We were ready to go and try something new, do something different, because we heard it, talked about it while we were away from the farm. Thanks for listening. If you want to learn more about Marty, there are a few stories that we've done with him over the years at Louisiana Farm Bureau for our TV show, This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. Most recently, a video called Road to Leadership, hitting on some of the same stories you heard in this episode. I will link a few of those in the show notes below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about how you can get involved in Louisiana Farm Bureau, become a member just like Marty talked about. You can find that information in the show notes as well. Become a member today. It supports the work that we do as an organization to fight for Louisiana farmers, ranchers, and rural residents to make sure that they have a sustainable way of life for the future. For all of us here at Louisiana Farm Bureau, thanks for listening to this episode of the Louisiana Farm Bureau podcast. We'll see you again right here next week. We'll be right back.